What's up guys, Marcus here from Studio One Expert. And in this video, I wanted to focus on low latency monitoring and specifically Blue Z versus Green Z, when to use each option and what the benefits are of each option. So this is something that I see come up a lot. I think at this point, we all kind of have a grasp on native low latency monitoring and what it means for our workflow. I know I've done a video for what's new in Studio One 3.5. In addition to that, I've got a Groove 3 course that outlines the process in a lot of detail. And then in addition to that, there's numerous colleagues of mine have done their own versions of that type of video as well. But what I wanted to focus on is specifically Blue Z versus Green Z, because this is something I see come up on the forums a lot, and I think there's still a lot of confusion with this aspect. So first of all, what is Blue Z versus Green Z? Well, Blue Z is hardware direct monitoring, where Green Z is native low latency monitoring. Now, it's worth mentioning that hardware direct monitoring in Studio One for any interface that supports it is based on the ASIO direct monitoring protocol or standard, which basically allows an interface driver to talk to and report to the DAW and they can kind of work together in giving the user a very low near zero latency workflow. So I'm just gonna pull up an image here, which kind of helps define this. So this is the whole round trip process in terms of getting an input signal to when it comes out, regardless of whether you're listening on headphones or speakers. It's gonna come in, it's gonna pass through the converters, any buffers that's in your hardware. It's gonna end up in the DAW, where it's gonna go through the processing, the playback, and then it's gonna pass out through the digital to analog converters to the output. So with hardware direct monitoring, you're basically going to be rerouting your input. The minute it passes through to the analog to digital converters, it simply gets routed and merged with your DAW output. So it gets routed right back to the output. Now this results in an incredibly low latency value. So for example, let's move back to Studio One over here. If I open up my preferences, you'll notice that I have this option, use native low latency monitoring instead of hardware direct monitoring. Now I see a lot of people ask why they don't have this option available. And that simply means that your hardware interface that you're using does not support it. So for example, let's go into my audio device setup over here and let's change over from the Persona Studio 192 to the Quantum. Now, as we make that change, you'll notice that it's been grayed out. And the reason for this is that the Quantum does not support that particular feature in terms of hardware direct monitoring using the ASIO direct monitoring protocol. So if we switch back to the Studio 192 and back to our processing tab, we can see this option is available. So I'm gonna deselect this right now. And the minute I deselect this, because I'm using an interface that supports Blue Z, it's going to bypass in the background, it's going to bypass my universal control application. So here's universal control. This is my Studio 192. This is my voiceover mic over here. I've got my headphone routing. This is gonna become bypassed as soon as I enable this preference in Studio One. So let's move over here. I've disabled use native low latency monitoring instead of hardware monitoring. And now you'll notice here that my mixer is entirely bypassed. That's because the DAW is now taking over my mixer. So we'll go back into Studio One over here. I'm gonna click OK. I'm just gonna record enable a channel, the channel that my voiceover mic is on, so, so I, I can, can hear myself. myself. Okay. okay. Also, also, I've got, got a little bit of latency happening here. So all I need to do in this case is I just need to enable the output bus that I'm listening through, I just have to enable hardware direct monitoring on that bus. I'll enable it on my on my main outs and also on my headphones. Okay, so now my headphone mix just went completely zero latency or close to it. So you'll notice here, this says around zero. That's because the amount of latency that you get by passing through the converters is so minimal. I don't know what this would actually be if you had to map it out, but I would say it would be zero point something, a really small figure. But it's as close as you can get to monitoring through something like an analog console of some sort in terms of latency. And for that reason, it's absolutely brilliant. Now, when to use this 
bluesy mode if your interface supports it. And it's worth mentioning that certain third-party interfaces do support this. So I know RME, I think some Antelope, and perhaps Motu, if I'm not mistaken. Don't quote me on those. You'd have to do your research to find out which interfaces support it. But I know there are other third-party interfaces besides the Personas interfaces that do support this. But in the Personas lineup, there's quite a few that support it, including Studio 192, Studio 192 Mobile, and some of the older interfaces from Personas support this as well. Now, the benefit of this type of workflow, besides the low latency, would be if you're doing something where you're passing through a channel strip, like an RC500, ADL700, maybe a third-party channel strip, something from Universal Audio or Avalon, and you've already EQ'd and compressed your signal, on the way in and you're just accepting a line level input and you're looking to get the lowest possible latency that you can out of your system, then this is a great option if you don't need to use any plugins to sculpt your sound. Now it's worth mentioning when we're running in this protocol, like I mentioned, we cannot use any native plugins. So for example, if I instantiated Empire over here right now, I'm not hearing that pass through at all. If I brought in another compressor, I wouldn't hear that as well. But one thing's worth mentioning is that we can use something like basic reverb. So I've just brought that up. Let's go ahead and bring this down a little bit, something a little bit more reasonable. And also I've got a beat delay here. So, 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 so. we can use reverbs and delays. We can use effects for tracking when we're using a bluesy workflow if your interface supports it. Now, another thing worth mentioning is that this doesn't pay any attention, this low latency figure of around zero, this doesn't pay any attention to your device block size. So for example, right now, I could take my device block size and I could move this to 1024. It's not going to matter. So at 1024, if I go back into my processing tab, you'll see the low latency figure over here. It hasn't changed for me. It's still around zero. So in terms of my audio device block size, that does not matter. Now, it is worth mentioning that if I was to engage my room reverb and my beat delay, that these now would have kind of a pre-delay based on that buffer size, which might be too much. It might also be okay. But in that capacity, I usually like to work with this set somewhere around 512 or 256. And I used a Studio 192 for two years on my Mac Pro 2008. So in terms of Blue Z, if you're running an older system where you only have USB available, you don't have a Thunderbolt connection, Studio 192 or any interface that supports hardware direct monitoring through the ASIO direct monitoring protocol or standard, it's a fantastic option to be able to use because it doesn't matter that you have an older system, you're gonna get great performance and great reliability out of the system. Now, something else worth mentioning over here, let's just change this back to 32. I mentioned that we can't use plugins in terms of native plugins on the channel while we're recording, but they have an answer for this as well. So for example, I have my audio device controls option available to show audio device controls. So you can see as I do that, I have this information here in terms of some audio device controls for headphone routing. And I also had some up here. Let's go ahead and re-enable that. What this allows us to do when you're working with a Studio 192 system where it has inbuilt DSP to handle the task because we can no longer use our native processing power in terms of any plugins that we have, we can use the built-in DSP plugins. And on the Studio 192 system, it's integrated brilliantly into Studio One. So for example, here is my DSP fat channel. Now, me controlling this is the exact same as if I went into Universal Control Application. I'm gonna select this microphone channel. Here's my compressor, EQ, limiter. I could control these, I could activate these, and it's gonna be no different than me doing it in Studio One on the plugin GUI. So for example, let's activate our compressor, go back into Universal Control. This is activated now. So we go to this compressor tab, let's deselect this, and you can see that this is deselected. Now, if you instantiate a native fat channel on the same channel and you click this link option, then you can control 
either the DSP controls the native or the native controls the DSP, vice versa. So for example, this is the native version of my fat channel. I can instantiate this high pass filter. If I open up the DSP version, you'll see that the same move was made. Let's turn on the compressor and pull this down and go back to this one. And again, same things over here, right? We can adjust these. So this is incredibly powerful. If you need just a basic EQ compression, a nice sounding channel strip that you want to track through when you're using bluesy or hardware direct monitoring, this is a great option because you don't have any latency. And if you're doing punch-ins and you're only monitoring through the plugin, then it's very easy to be able to do this type of workflow. So you have the benefit that you don't have this disjointed or jagged playback in terms of what you're monitoring versus what you're playing back. The other advantage to using BlueZ on an older system is that we can kind of have this hybrid workflow. So if I open up my preferences here, let's go ahead and set this to something like 64. And then let's go into our processing tab here and you'll notice here that it says enable low latency monitoring for instruments. So our hardware monitoring is happening for any audio that's being recorded through the interface, but we can still take advantage of the low latency monitoring path when working with virtual instruments. So this is a workflow that was impossible previous to Studio One version 3.5. So for example, you could use a hardware direct monitoring workflow of some sort. You could set your playback buffer or your buffer in general to 1024, and then it wouldn't matter what you were tracking at because you were hearing a low latency mix through a software application, but if you tried to do a virtual instrument, you'd have to do this swapping of bringing things down. But now we have the best of both worlds because we can use a bluesy or a hardware direct monitoring low latency path for our recording. But if I wanted to bring up a virtual instrument right now, I could do so very easily. And I'm doing that in the native low latency monitoring mode, which is enabled by this green Z over here. So this is really the best of both worlds. Now, having said that, it's also easy to change over from the blue Z mode to the green Z mode. So let's say, for example, I'm done with the fat channel. Let's go ahead and take that out. Let's say that I was recording a DI bass or a DI guitar, and I wanted to instantiate quickly an instance of Empire on because they didn't want to commit to a sound. They just wanted to monitor through something. Well, that's no problem. I could come in here and I could go to my audio device block size and I could change this to something even lower, as low as it could go. So for example, either 32 or 16. For now, let's just go ahead and choose 32 samples. And now in my processing tab, I could go ahead now and I could engage this check mark. I'll go ahead and click apply. I no longer need to use this headphone routing tab over here. So let's go ahead and let's just pull this down all together. But now I could instantiate Empire. And now I'm monitoring through Empire. And you can see that this is in the low latency path because it has a green Z. So this is, you know, a powerful option. And then if we needed to track some more vocals or something, I could take this out. We could come back in. And then I'm right back to working in a hardware direct monitoring mode with my Blue Z option. Now, there are strengths to every interface and the Studio 192 strength, Studio 192, Studio 192 mobile is really about the hardware direct monitoring, the built-in DSP. And even though we don't have the lowest round trip latency in terms of using software monitoring or the native low latency monitoring, which would be the green Z option, we can get fantastic sounding results and fantastic latency by using the blue Z. And then if we need to, we can quickly switch over to the green Z. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause this video for a second and I'm going to swap over my mic and everything to the quantum and we'll have a look at that. Okay. So I've just swapped over my screen flow setup to be using the quantum instead of the studio 192. Let's have a really quick look at this option in terms of a green Z workflow. Well, first off, I don't need to set up any headphone direct routing over here. So for example, in the quantum, I can set my main set of headphones or either one of these set of headphones. I can set them to monitor, for example, my main outs. So let's go into our IO setup. We'll just disable this Q mix over here and I don't need to see any of my outputs anymore. So now this is my main output bus that I'm listening to over here with the quantum. Now the benefits of the quantum 
you have an incredibly low figure in terms of round trip latency. So you can see here, my device block size is set to 32 samples and I'm at 2.5 milliseconds of round trip latency. I could take this down even further to 16. You have even lower latency, but I'm gonna to stick to 32. Reason being, I actually prefer the way my voice sounds at 32 samples and 2.5 milliseconds of round trip latency versus 1.5. Now the benefits with this type of workflow is of course, we can track through any plugins that we want. So we could take the same instance of Empire, instantiate that. And we'll go in here. Um, let's go ahead and bring that down a little bit, something like right about here. And if I was to pull up my performance monitor, over here, let's close this plugin. You can see I have Ampire, zero latency in terms of what it's adding, and the CPU hit is not that bad at all. Now I could also do the same thing with any other third-party plugins that I have. So for example, this is one of my favorite compressors uh, in the software domain ever made. Now I could track through this. Now this is adding a little bit of latency, but it's still allowable in terms of being in the native low latency monitoring path, we're at 0.4 milliseconds of latency. So that can be used, we're monitoring through this now. Or we have another workflow altogether that we could use. So for example, I could show my inputs and I could have that same instance of Oxford Dynamics, I could have that on the inputs. Or I could take something like, we'll take the CL1B by SoftTube, which is one of my all time favorite compressors as well. And now I'm monitoring through this on the input, which is dial up the threshold a little bit. And now this would be compressing on the way in. Could totally overkill this entirely. You can hear that this is pumping like crazy. But that now can be rendered on the input and recorded or printed to tape, so to speak. And then of course we can open up our performance monitor to see what type of latency is being added. And this is obviously compensated. Uh, but we're looking at 0.1 milliseconds of latency. So if we wanted to use any types of plugins on the input channel. And the nice thing about using them on the input channel is of course we get the gain reduction meter in the actual channel strip as well. Regardless of the fact that there's nothing happening here. So for example, I could take all of these right now, remove them all, and I'm still getting my gain reduction meter because there's actually a plugin instantiated on my input. So. I mean, it's really up to you. It's really up to, it depends on the type of system that you have available, the resources that you have, but between these two options, you can really get a lot of different ways that you can record your audio when working in Studio One. But I've seen many people say, you know, it's all about software monitoring, not necessarily, because there may be cases when you're working on an older system USB 2, where you might not realize that you could be getting amazing performance if you're using an interface that supports that protocol. And if you don't need to do an abundance of processing with native plugins on the channels, maybe just a little bit of reverb and delay. And if you're running through external channel strips, then Blue Z is a fantastic option if your audio interface supports it. And like I said, the easiest way to find that out is simply by coming in here and going to your processing tab. If this is grayed out, your audio interface does not support it. If you have an audio interface that does support it, you're going to see that option. So anyways, a little bit long winded here, but I really wanted to kind of hopefully demystify the whole blue Z versus green Z and just shed a little bit of light on when each one can come in handy and what circumstances to use them and where you might consider using one over the other. And like I said, I've got a quantum interface here. I absolutely love it. The latency is amazing. But having said that, there's no way I'm getting rid of my trusty Studio 192. Anyways, a little on the long side, sorry about that. Was hoping to keep this a little bit shorter, but just wanted to explain the whole blue Z versus green Z, what interfaces support it, shed a little bit of light on that whole scenario. Anyways, I hope you guys got something from this and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.